I dated a communist once. I had no idea. She seemed really sweet, but it did not end well. Honestly, I should have noticed all the red flags. Welcome back to another Alpha Star cast. This time around, we got Alpha Star playing as Zerg. If you guys want to see more of these games, of course, there's a full playlist, but oh, I got to speak quick because our Protoss player appears to be up to no good. So spawning here in the bottom right side of the map, we've got the Red Zerg player. It's once again, Alpha Star. And to the top left, but not entirely in the top left, we have the Blue Protoss, the Human Challenger, Master Player. Now, of course, this is from some time ago on the ladder, but not too long ago because it's actually on Kairos Junction, so we know it was a semi-recent-ish game. I'm casting this out November 7th. I cast a couple of these out. They'll go up on YouTube in I don't know what order, but I do know that we've been keeping a full playlist and detailed Chronicle Adventures. So if you want to see all the Alpha Star casts, regardless of order, be sure to check them out on that playlist, which, again, if I'm smart, I'll be linking up here, but I might be terrible and don't. We'll find out how good at YouTube I am. But it's- oh my god, it's cannons. Wait, it's gateway first, followed by cannons. This is one of those games that comes once in a blue moon, lest you're watching classic at BlizzCon or print F every day on the ladder. This is a cool way to do it, by the way. We're not going to see this purely be cannons, as many of you know the cannon rush strategy to be, but this will likely be shield batteries following it up, with cannons just kind of setting the groundwork to protect, harass, and ideally at least shut down a hatchery. But we know this from Alpha Star. Alpha Star has seen cannons, and Alpha Star knows how to react to cannons. And even though this is a master level player, I will note this comes from the final version of Alpha Star, at least what was available in the replay folder. So we know that this wasn't one of Alpha Star's original versions that maybe has never seen cannons before. Zealot gets in here too. That's going to be super annoying. Drones split left and drones go up, trying to take a third base somewhere, but realizing, oh, that's not an option either. The cannons, of course, were mostly canceled. One does finish, and this will help zone out some units. Uh, the drone ends up finding a way to get a base down over here, but Zealots are in the mineral line. A little bit of, let's see, not micro coming out of our Protoss right now. Just finding a good position to hold and do as much damage as possible, but not really getting a lot of kills. Only one drone dead from this so far. Uh, the first couple links don't quite cut it, but they do deal with that zealot. This drone is uh, working away at the gateway. And while this goes on, we do have the uh, cyber core, so that'll be what is ideally shield batteries, but with Alpha Star being uh, all over the place like this, our Protoss player has not had its probe over here to build as it normally would. And the thing is, while Alpha Star may get extra hatcheries up, or is at least trying to, they're going to be disconnected from the main. Reinforcements will not be consolidated. And in a perfect world, shield batteries and cannons will just cut off these two bases and allow our human to focus on one or the other. Uh, back on the other side of the map, the Robo starts up. Normally we see that go on proxy as well, but a little perhaps worried that the cannon attack wasn't that good, ends up trying to play back at home. So our human's taking a nexus, and the Robo is built defensively, not offensively. But still, cannons and zealots, I mean, it doesn't take much of either with a shield battery backing it up. I love this position, by the way. The Zell can sit between the two and help keep the Zerglings from getting us around. Alpha Star can't really move out of this too easily. And off of creep, a Zell can 1v1 a queen, actually. So this is a pretty tough spot for Alpha Star to be in. Building just Zerglings and no drones, it's just going to be a huge break on the cannons and then likely an immediate counterattack. Or the may say Alpha Star trying to circumvent this entirely, as this is only one cannon. This could be totally ignored, and Alpha Star could just run across the map with Zergling Speed, which is now done. Zella comes to the high ground, but that's not a spot that Zella really wants to be. And there's really not that much to defend on the other side of the field, so a full-blown counterattack could be really effective. And the fact that's exactly what happens here, running right past that cannon, saying, screw it. Wanted to spend time on the Zealot, but stops wasting time and immediately runs over. But there's an Immortal out, there's a Stalker out. Holding this wall should be doable. And in a worst-case scenario, maybe an extra pile in here to wall this in. But I mean, that barrier on the Immortal is going to keep it alive for a bit of time. The Immortal itself, it, it, it just has a lot of health and shields. It does appear like it's going to get sacrificed, which is unfortunate, as it's being walled out of the base. But by walling it out of the base, it secures that none of these lings will get in. So falling back to this little nook is not going to be enough. Oh wait, maybe, maybe, maybe! Shield battery timing! Oh my god, the shield battery timing is insane! 
This is huge. Alpha Star has no drones to work with, no economy to work with, has sacrificed its army, not cleaning up the cannon, but trying to get the counterattack, which was ultimately failed and well defended by our human. So this is a really tough spot for Alpha Star to be in. Alpha Star Zerg is pretty good, don't get me wrong, but it's still limited by what it can do off of 20-something workers, which was 18 for the majority of this game. And as this game progresses, we're getting weapon upgrades. We got, like I said, those shield batteries from earlier. Uh, War Prison comes out. That's going to be micro. Pick up these two immortals. Dance on the other side of the field. I mean, it, it should be just chaos. And I don't think Alpha Star should... <laughs> What's it do with the links? I don't think, I don't think Alpha Star is going to be able to control this game the way it would normally want to. Our human has done a very successful job disrupting this. With the smallest investment in it, too. This one cannon, one shield battery combo. You, you see, Officer really just doesn't know how to react to this. And again, I go back to the fact that this wasn't one of the initial versions or the supervised versions of Alpha Star. This replay came from the final version pack. So this is what is supposed to be a very seasoned and experienced Alpha Star now killing its own queen. Hold up, back up. Wait a minute. What? Did I see that right? Was Alpha Star attacking its own queen there? Hold the phone. All right. The Immortals come in. We saw that before. Pounding away on top of the Lings. All right. And then... Because I, I was like, yeah, I didn't see the Immortals attack this queen. <laughs> the Lings almost kill it. What a misclick. One HP. Alpha Star barely stops that. But now the queen with no health gets sniped off by the Immortals and there's nothing to push off that warp prism. That's hilarious. I mean, we've seen Alpha Star hit its own self with disruptors before. I've never seen it target fire its own queen. What a strange misclick. And this cannon's still standing. It's just this thing has claimed so many lives. Whoa! What? This cannon has 28 kills on it. What a crazy worthwhile investment this thing was this game. Holy crap. Maybe, okay, hear me out, guys. Maybe Alpha Star, you know, has learned of paganism and it was going to do a blood sacrifice of the queen in order to gain power to defeat the Protoss. I mean, it's only crazy, but it might just be so crazy it works. But no, seriously, that was weird and a strange misclick for sure. Uh, the two Immortals are proven to be a big problem with no Queens and no anti-air, no way to push off that Warp Prism. That cannon continues to harass everything that leaves the base. Ravagers, Roaches, Queens, this shield battery keeps it up nice and healthy. Oh my god. 31. How many kills does this cannon have? Look, here, pause, 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 YouTube. I want you guys to right now in the comment section... Oh, that's a cool, that's a cool way for the Ravager to pause. I want you to guess how many kills this cannon has by the, either the time it's killed or by the time the game's over. I want you to write a number. I don't care about anything else. Just write a number, what you think this number is going to be by the time this game is over or by the time the cannon dies. I will give the winner a shout out in one of the future Alpha Star casts. But maybe I spoke too soon, and if anyone wrote anything other than 31, well, fuck it, we just lost the game. Alpha Star took so long to break this defensive structure, finally breaks it, but at the cost of another hatchery, question mark? Oh my god, this Grosso Balls don't even hit Jack Squat landing once again, that hatchery is one shot from dead. There we go, nice pickup, good control here out of our master player. Back at home, by the way, more immortals were made. We've got plus one weapon upgrades. I think right now it's going to be really tough to deal with the Zerglings, but that's where the Sim City and the shield batteries come into play. Once that wave of Zerglings is washed off, Warp Prism Micro will be everything that it needs to be to clean this up. And let's not forget while all this goes on, if you've not been watching the production tab, I wasn't. I was too obsessed with a dumb cannon. Apparently there's double stargates, and apparently we got double void rays, which, unlike oracles, are not limited by energy and they can attack forever, making them the ultimate decision to have in this sort of scenario. And, frankly, well, even two void rays might seal the deal, four guarantees this is game over, because there's, like, no queens in play. Oh, excuse me, it's actually oracles coming up. But the point is, there's no queens in play, there's no spore crawlers. The bases are spread sporadic and long distance. Like, there's just nothing to deal with the air. The Stargate was the sickest move someone could have made in this situation, especially against Alpha Star. Oh, 
I don't know where this corrosive bile's are going. <laughs> I would love to know how officers are targets. <laughs> But uh, let's uh, let's keep a keen eye here on Alpha Star. What's what's Alpha Star looking at towards the end of this game? And I say this predicting the end with these air units, not because I actually know. But this is uh, I mean, a couple crystal balls try to land. The void ray is just not being touched. Queens are the answer, and Alpha Star doesn't have any to be had. There's no creep spread between these bases, so connecting to them to respond is almost impossible. Unless our human player just leaves the Void Ray on hold position and eats a corrosive bile, there's there's no removing it. Oh, prismatic alignment! That's a overkill mode where it does bonus damage to armor by a lot, so everything there melting. I'm going back to All Vision. Alpha Star, I don't even know what you're looking at. <laughs> this game is, uh,. 25 drones, 36 army supply. It's like one last ditch fight. It, oh my god, officer doesn't even know what it wants to do with the lings! Runs in, runs out, runs in, runs out. Does no damage whatsoever. Gets absolutely massacred and officer just taps out. So congratulations to the human player taking victory in this game. Hope you guys like watching these Alpha Star videos. There's a lot to go through and I plan to do plenty more, so make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, ring that little bell, that way I don't miss you on the next one.